tonight? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to PNR Show Season 3, Episode 3. I forgot the title. <laughs> Can't even hear the music. Where's the music? Can you not hear it? No. Barely. So bring me lugger for life. Welcome to the Planet No Return show. We're knee deep in our third season. Well, ankle deep anyway. And the quality tell. just keeps on a coming. So yeah. I found um, the, I found the title. What? I found the show title if you want it. What's the show? <laughs> Holiday Sam Strike Back. It's such a good title on Yeah. Sam Adams Force Awakens. Um so with me as always is Gary, Jeremy, Keith, and I am Rob, and we are so happy for you. <laughs> so happy for you. We're so happy for you that you decided to join us. We're so happy that you decided to join us for this fantastically amazing, wonderful show. Uh, we want to thank Rusty Boggards, Stu Venable for the use of his music as our theme song, which you didn't hear. Um, but if you really actually want to hear it, go to boxyboggards.com or on iTunes and look them up and they're there. I didn't, we I are... Horrible. It was like... Could have been in. It could have been out in your car. That's how far away it's not. Oh, what? Where's my right. mic? We are also. I think. Mic? Are we live on Alpha Geek tonight? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, Channel yeah. three, alphageekradio.com. If you want to watch us live, we broadcast Thursday nights starting at about 9 p.m. Eastern time, give or take. And uh, you can contact us or check us out in a number of different ways. PNRshow.com is our website. Our email is pnrshow at gmail.com. And we got the Twitters, Gary at Always Breaking, Jeremy at Jeremy Brooks, Keith at Wolfman K, Reb, Rob at RebRob, R-E-B-R-O-B. -E -E we still got the Google Plus chat room going for you if you're interested in joining us and having a chat. Uh, just ask us for an invite at any one of those places. We'll get you in there. And we're looking for some other ways to expand and communicate with our vast audience. More to come on that. Mm -hmm. We like to so, be confusing. I don't think I, I want to. I want to uh, get any further ado because we've got two beers to get through this evening. Yes, and let's I know do that. Gary is uh, is thirsty. Uh, so we we're going back to an old friend, an old old friend, Sam Adams. Uh, a couple of these beers we've we've uh, we've we got their holiday pack. A few of them we've done back in the old. Uh, um, Happy Time Magic Hour days, and one of them tonight we'll be revisiting, and then we have a new one as well. We're going to be doing the Holiday Porter. That's our flash to the past, uh, as well as his Sparkling Ale, which is a new one for us. And uh, looking forward to, to both of them. Revisiting, you know, I haven't done Sam Adams Holiday Porter. It's probably been four years or so. Yeah, I think I, I want to say Holiday Porter was in the very first year yeah. of Happy Time Magic Hour. The first Christmas and season. And it hasn't been back. No. It, has, it hasn't been in their classics pack since then. Yeah. So as so. always, when we revisit these beers, I'm interested to see how my tastes have changed over the years. The guys, the other three guys have stayed remarkably consistent, so... Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, a wild card out there. But we're starting with this Sparkling Ale, which is 4.8% alcohol by volume. Um, we're got a very, light, a very light, weedy, hoppy. Not hoppy. Sorry, not hoppy. I apologize. Mm, it, it smells like a um, shiner. It does. It does a little bit like a blonde, like the bl light blonde. Jeremy, you had the description of this in the pre-show. Do you have it again? It's on the How bottom. Does... Oh, Sparkling Ale is uh, their brewer's take on a rare historic Scottish style. It's golden Scottish. in color and effervescent and combines subtle notes of noble hops with pale and acidulated no, no, malts right to create a hops. slightly yeah. floral character and a dry finish. I like dry. I like floral. I like and Scottish. It, and if I may say, well, this will sound weird, but it, it smells sweet. Mm, yeah. It's kind of got some, like... Fruity Lamb smells in there. Yeah, some like, lambic notes. To like, it. like I'm getting a, like a pear kind of smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's apple, surprisingly apple clear. It's a and it is. There are a lot of bubbles going on there. Almost like a wheat. 
But it's oh, really nice. like super clear. Yeah. Forward with a great head too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mine's starting to go down, but the but bubbles are really fine. It's like it's like it's champagne bubbles. style bubbles. Yeah. It's the champagne of Boston beer. I don't know if it's the light <laughs> in the different locations, but Gary's looks very very golden in color, where Keith's is almost a little more ambery. Well, yeah, my, my lighting is, is weird because I'm, I'm right under a lamp when I show it up to the camera here. Yeah, so and I, I'm right under I'm a probably, fluorescent bulb. If yeah. I light it if I light I, it this way, it's probably a little more golden. But either way, at 4.8% alcohol by volume, it should be a very, very light, gulpy beer. So without any further ado, let's go at it and let's kick off it. the Christmas season right with hey. sparkling ale. Happy holidays, friends. Happy holidays, boys. Special. Mm. <laughs> Gary, you know that wasn't really whispered. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> We're all special. I wasn't talking about you. I'm I was special. talking about the family members standing next to me who don't know how to use a staple. <laughs> you, there's like five staples jammed in here. <laughs> I'm a That's what you said. You, guys, you totally broke the stapler. All right. Anyway, you guys continue. Well, I'll, this I'll is good. Dealing with staplers. <laughs> yeah, this is very. Um, it's very delightful. It, I'm kind of surprised this is a holiday beer because yeah. this seems like a summer beer to me. It is very much like a summer beer. It yeah. is light. It's refreshing. It's crisp. Yes. Um, easy to drink, but it's got a nice amount of flavor. Yeah, it's it's got the complexity that I really wasn't expecting for this color beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and still a light crispness, almost, almost uh, a, a, a dry apple cider kind of crispness. Yeah. You just took the word right out of my mouth. I, you know, I had that. It smells sweet when I opened it. I was completely wrong. It's very dry. Yeah. Very dry. Um, it's really, it's really good though. Excellent. I really want it year round. I'm really annoyed that it's a seasonal now, and I don't have any idea why it's Christmas seasonal. But it's because of the really name, good. sparkling. Yeah, because like New you know, New Year's. That's like I tell you what, oh, yeah. I can't kind of see this as exactly, an exactly. I can't stand champagne. I would take this in a heartbeat. This I actually, like to me, has a lot of very similar taste profiles to champagne, and even down to mouthfeel. Mouthfeel on champagne is very you know bubbly, and yeah. you get all the all that action happening. But this is. Um, I have definitely had some champagnes that have a very, very similar taste profile yeah. to this, with the the fruity kind of flavors and the dryness to it. You can roll this around in the front of your mouth, and it and it starts to burn just like a champagne does. Mm. This is a really four, good, though. For a four point eight percent alcohol by volume beer, there's some depth there. There's some complexity in that flavor. It's really yeah, quite good. I'm. Totally shocked by this. So let's go around the table. Let's let's rate this. Damn. Ooh. Let's rate this thing. All right. Well, I'll start. Uh, yeah. Go oh, ahead. No, Jeremy starts. No, Jeremy starts. Yeah, I've already described it. Um, that I'd I'd like to drink this in the summertime. I'd give it a seven. Uh, because they're pitching it as a seasonal holiday beer, which I don't think it really fits. Um, but on its own, it's pretty good, and I would drink it again. All right, I'll I'll go now. Um, yeah, it's good. It's uh, my expectations for anything from Sam Adams are fairly low. Um, so uh, this is, but this is good. I, I like this, and it it is really more of a summer beer to me. It's really, I mean, I said it smelled like a shiner, and to me, the taste profile is is very similar to that style of beer as well. I'm definitely getting some some yeasty flavors coming through that I would associate with those kinds of beers. Um, but yeah, it's very good. I don't think it's quite as good as uh, everybody else thinks it is, but it's definitely tasty, and it's not something I would be embarrassed to serve at my holiday party coming up next weekend. I'll probably put the other bottle out. How many bottles did we get? It was like one of each, or two of each in the pack? Two, two of each. each. Yeah, yeah, two of each. So, so uh, Sparkling this will be a good one. This is kind of going to be like a clallet palate cleanser between some of those heavy, more like stouts or IPAs. But yeah, it's solid. I'm going to give it a six. I 
I will jump in next. Uh, it really has a nice dry apple kind of pear sparkling flavor to it. It's really crisp, really easy to drink, nice mouthfeel. Complete shocker. I don't understand why it's the this seasonal. Um, I'm in fact it, it it actually upsets me a little bit that I can't buy this instead of St. Adams Lager. <laughs> this is definitely better than St. Adams Lager. Yeah, they should they should put this out at least right alongside it, if not in place of it. Yeah. Uh, fantastic beer by Sam Adams. Um, and for that alone, I'm going to rate it a 7. Um, I'd probably give it an 8 if they made it year-round. Um, I'm going to disagree with the guys in some ways. I, mean, I agree with you in, in others, but um, I understand what you're saying about it being a great tasting beer, perhaps for a summer beer. But going back to what we said earlier, I can completely understand why this is in the holiday pack, and that is exactly for the reason that you said earlier, a New Year's type of beer. It's got a very champagne taste can, feel to it. I can kind of buy that. And I know I, that's why it's in here. It's not a yeah. Christmas beer. It's a party beer. Um, mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of depth and flavor in it, like I said, for only a 4.8% ale. Um, it's really well-rounded. It's got a buttery quality to it, even, that we hadn't mentioned yet, and that pear taste, that crispness to it. It's just really nice. It's just a very, very nicely crafted beer. Um, and I, 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 I'm I, sorry to hear that Gary has <clears throat> had bad experiences with Sam Adams. My experience is the opposite. I've, I've found more beers of theirs that I've liked than I haven't. So, um, and this is going to be one of those. I'm going to give this a nine. It's it's really good. Wow. This yeah, this, is, this really seems like um, a beer that's right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, house. absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, beer advocate scores an 82. Our average is a 7.25. So we're we're close. Um, and. I agree with Rob totally about the the, hol the holiday party beer. This is the kind of beer that, like, on a New Year's or you know, if you're at a holiday party, absolutely, you would be happy to drink all night. And at only 4.8 percent, you you wouldn't be sorry if you had several of these because you would still probably be able to walk. Um, and uh, you know, it would be a good it would be a good choice for a long evening of drinking on New Year's. Yeah. In fact, if you're like me and you're going to a Holly, uh, New Year's party and you don't like champagne, this is what you want to drink. Yeah, I agree. It, that's, it's a good occasion for that. So, um, On a completely unrelated note, I got a Hanukkah badge for uh, Untapped. Ooh, Mazel Tov. Nice. Yeah. So. L'chaim to life. All right, yep. so we're, we're not going to dilly the dally. We're going to move right along for something new and completely different. We're gonna get dark. We're gonna go over to the dark side. We did the that's a see this is our Star Wars episode. We did the light side beer. Now we're going to do the dark side beer. I haven't even finished this one yet. Oh. Well, I'm gonna talk about it while you're finishing it. Um, we're moving on to our uh, our old favorite. Um, like Keith said, we did it back in season one of the Happy Time Magic Hour. This is the Holiday Porter. Um, it's described as a full flavored porter inspired by the famous drink. Of London's Victoria era luggage porters, brewed with generous portions of caramel, Munich, and chocolate malt. You're, you're, you're drawing me in. This hearty porter finishes with traditional English fuggles and East Kent mm. Goldings. Cheers. Love me some fuggles. Yes, and this one uh, bumps it up by a full percentage point 5.8%. ABV, Woo, which is, which is low, low for a porter. We are going to be, uh, yeah, it's high alcohol beers. That's low for that's really low for a porter. Not really no, low. No, porters actually are. I thought you'd say uh, in yeah. the sixes. No. Yeah, five point eight isn't it's that low, low because they were. They were it's not that lower, much lower than a six, first of all, and uh, and yeah, I mean porters were kind of built to be the everyman drink that you could have. Um, and still go back to work, you know. So they were they were made to be in the five, sometimes sub five range. Keith, don't well, confront you can see me. This don't color. confront me with math. Sorry, it's not as dark as I expected. It's pouring like a cola. That's it's a, got a nice little red caramely color to it. 
Yeah, it looks it looks Polish. Yeah. Pretty good lacing, actually. I'm noticing already. The chocolate, the chocolate the great head. come right out. I got that immediately. I haven't even opened it yet. I had to go find another glass. I didn't want to mix it up. I could just yeah. I could just breathe this all night instead of oxygen. That might make for an interesting show. I cannot remember what I what I gave this back at the time, but I, I imagine I since know. it was early in my beer drinking days and early in my especially darker beer drinking days, I probably didn't <laughs> like this too much. It probably was not one of your favorites. No. But like huh. I said, interesting to see if if I've changed over the years. So, are well, you ready? Yeah, we can't oh, even sorry. go back and look because the, the site's been re revamped. So <laughs> at least it's online, gone. right? Well, the happy uh, our pint over returns <laughs> online. Yeah, sorry. Happy time. It is online. It's back. It's back. Fall back. It's all good. You can go there now. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. Holiday Porter beer number two. Here it comes. I love that silence while we're just savoring the flavor. <laughs> wow. I think the last time Adam's seasonal pack we did was maybe like their summer beers or something. I remember there being some stuff in there that was just not good. Um, but... Uh, well, I said that crappy Saranac one out... That maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking. But I've had some other Sam Adams seasonals that I just truly wasn't impressed with. Um, but, man, their, their winter seasonals, their holiday seasonal pack has so far been um, kind of a home run. Well, actually, the interesting thing is this is one of two seasonal packs they've got out right now. Um, this mm -hmm. is the Winter Classics pack. Oh, I haven't seen the other one. And then there's another one I saw that when I was out looking that I almost grabbed in place of this. And I'm like, crap, that's the wrong one. I wonder if there's different well, stuff on the East Coast. Coast have out here, I mean... uh, but I like this pack. This is a good pack. Um, this porter is excellent. Again, I'm not sure what makes this porter Christmassy, per se, or holiday. The label? Yeah, besides the label. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just a great classic porter, and they did it in the old English style. They used the English uh, hops in it and the English malts, and they just nailed it. It's a great classic. This is like the definition of a porter, and it's 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 brilliant. Yeah, this is like a kind of a, I don't know, like a curl up on a winter's day in front of the fire drinking beer type of beer. It's very kind of homey and, and hearty and one small. Of the, just... One of the downsides of craft beer is everybody's trying so hard to do something different right now that a lot of the actual basics are lost. So if you're just coming into craft beer in the last few years, you may not know what uh, just a plain porter is supposed to taste <laughs> like. Because everything else point. is a really good point. Yeah, is 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 just these crazy flavors on top of it, you know, brownie, double chocolate, brown, Salted caramel, coconut, porters. caramel. Porter. Yeah, exactly. This is a classic English style, which invented the style um, porter. It's the same porter they were drinking back in, you know, the 1700s and 1800s, um, and it's it's just fabulous. It's a fabulous yeah, this is example very, of the style. It's very clean. Mm -hmm. It's not over the top in coffee or the malts sugars are really or good or anything. It's just no, very it's well just balanced, beautiful, clean, crisp, easy to drink porter. It's really good and and a beer that you could drink with lunch and go back to work. Exactly. <sighs> so Keith, are you gonna rate it? Yeah, I um, actually I think this is a fantastic porter. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna as porters go. I think. I gotta give it a nine. This is really good. It's just the perfect example of a porter. If you don't know what a porter is, go grab this um, and start there, and then and then go out and try all the crazy gingerbread 
you know, sugar cookie whatever porters that are out there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to agree with Keith. I'm going to give this a nine as well. It's very, um, for a guy that's really not uh, on the dark beer part of the spectrum, it's very drinkable. It's very clean. The malts are really good. Um, I definitely get the chocolate malt that they're talking about and the and the goldings and it just it's just very nicely rounded beer. I actually think that either by pure luck or divine providence, we chose a, a, a perfect pairing tonight. Because um, I think that. Uh oh. Rob. Did Rob freeze? Hello? Rob's frozen. I hear he is. Are you Hello? Hello? You chose a perfect, you said perfect, pair. perfect pairing, and then you just froze right up. So we chose a perfect pairing tonight for for two beers coming from the exact opposite direction, but accomplishes the same thing. Um, just a very nicely rounded, just a clean tasting beer, both of them. And so my my grade's going to be a, a nine, same as sparkling ale. Wow, this is a, it was good. Yeah, I um. Uh, like I said earlier, the the holiday pack from Sam Adams is is impressing me. Uh, I I agree with a lot, pretty, well, pretty much everything that Keith and Rob said. That um, you know, it's a good classic porter. There's a lot of flavor in there, and but you don't have an overabundance of coffee or an overabundance of chocolate. You have um, just a good balance of the nice maltiness that you would expect out of a porter. Um, uh, to me, uh, Black Butte Porter from Deschutes is kind of what sets a porter is kind of the definition for me. Um, but this is a this is really good. This is a very good one. I'm not going to chug it like I had to do the last one just so we could drink this one because um, I want to enjoy this for the rest of the show and kind of let it um, breathe a little and warm up. Uh, but it's it's really good. If they had if they sold just this in six packs, I would go out and buy a six pack of the holiday season. Um, it's a good good beer. I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah, it's. I I don't have much to add to what everybody has said. It's it's a great example. It's well balanced, easy to drink, full of flavor. Um, I I find myself wanting a little more roastiness in it as I drink it. Just a little, maybe a little darker, a little a little more bitterness in the malt, but not. That's about the only fault I can find with it. It's really good. I'm going to give it an 8 as well. I wonder what um, if you tried to do like a black and tan with the two beers that we did tonight, Ooh. how that would work. That might be great. Might be awesome, but it would, might be hard with the, uh, with the difference in the textures. I'm wondering if all the excessive bubbles from the, amber, or from the, uh, from the sparkler would... Uh, would wouldn't just mix the beers. I don't know. So be fun um, experiment though. You should try it on Saturday. I'll, I might try that. Uh, so we we rounded out with an eight and a half. Uh, Beer Advocate was uh, eighty four. So we're like exactly in line with them. And I think Untapped was actually like a three hair over three on theirs. So Untapped's a little low on this one, I think. Um, so yeah, good solid choice um, for beers, Sam Adams. Well done for your at least the first two out of the holiday pack. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of them. Well, yeah. maybe not the spiced beers, but spiced <laughs> 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 well, killer start. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it'll be interesting be... to contrast this with that that uh, stone one we got coming up in a, in a couple weeks. Mm, it is yeah. looking forward to a, that. a mocha spiced holiday. Stout or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, if you uh, if you want to play along at home, kids, the next week we're going to be doing out of the same pack the chocolate bock and the winter lager. So, grab your win uh, Sam Winter Classics pack and play along. I got another badge. A Winter You're Wonderland right. badge. I got three badges tonight. Wow. What's the Winter Wonderland? Why don't I have that? I have a level five. It looks like that. Ooh. That's awesome. Yeah, like a snowflake made out of beer bottles. I got a new brew Thursday tonight. Yeah, I got one of those. All right. 
I didn't get any. I checked into one already. I haven't checked in the other yet. Cue the music keys. Anyway, I'm going to get the hot going. I, Rob, Rob is supposed to cue me. He's not doing anything. He's just like working over there alone. I don't know what he's doing. Cue the music keys. Okay. All right, here we go. What the hell? <laughs> what we don't realize is that Rob's actually muted, so <laughs> this is working great <laughs> as usual. I'm almost pining for the days where the music doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that thing you just played? I, it was uh, Chiquita. It was lovely. Yeah, it was an ABBA song, right? Yeah, something like that. So if you're like us, or at least like me, you're still looking for that great... Holiday gift. If you're like wait, us, wait, so wait, Rob, <laughs> wait, wait, Rob we, we missed a segment, and I, I understand why we missed it because it's it's not normally there. Um, but while while we were waiting around for the music to go, yeah, uh, the lovely music to go, I happened to notice we actually have a feedback. Shut up! What? No, <laughs> no, I know, and it's weird. It didn't come in through the email. It came in from our website, which just went back live today. So this must have come through today. <laughs> but you you can go you can go to pnrshow.com backslash ask um, and type in uh, questions or comments or whatever and we have an anonymous question. That we had asked. Anybody we could do that? Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. pnrshow.com slash ask. Well that's going that? in the show notes. Who yeah. set that up? Uh, I, I did back when we set up the website and then I completely forgot about it. So, yeah, and I also noticed that our, our friend uh, uh, and listener, Aaron Fielder, has been submitting articles, too, there, and I didn't even notice it, so I, I just posted one of his articles. <laughs> good, good job, Aaron. Next Here's time Aaron. I noticed that. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, there, were, there were a few emails from him from yeah? the PNR show Gmail account, which I forgot to mention before the show, so oh. well, Pre- next one. week we will have some feedback. So, so anyway, um, uh, but an anonymous poster asked a question. That was it's almost like a trivia question. Yeah. What is what is the highest ABV you can get via fermentation alone? Yeast, not distilling. Oh, so it's he, high. He, he, oh, no, he that's explained. A good question. I, you know, I think I've heard of beers that were like up in the like fifteen to eighteen percent range. I want. I want to say. I want to say. Eighteen is like the top end. For yeah, that's, that sounds weird. But I don't. I don't actually know the answer. That would no, be, I think you can get I a lot higher than that. Um, I actually. I have the answer. You have the answer, Rob. I do. Brewmeister makes a beer called Snake Venom, which is sixty-seven point five percent alcohol. Okay. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. That's that's a beer, but it's not made. That's not made from pure fermentation that way. That's how, that's how that's would we better, know that? How would that we tell? Would be just, that would be distilled at that level. Well, how do you know that? Because I think I think I read somewhere in my travels that eighteen percent is the highest you can get from fermentation for anything for fermentation. No, so then I, it, then it, I have it those depends well. on the it depends on the yeast, and there are yeasts that can live in higher. Uh, for example, Dogfish Head 120 minutes has is usually around 18, but it's been around 20 percent before. Um, let's see, Utopias. I just pasted a link. I know, in the I chat. know, Utopias is goes higher, but I know they don't, they don't, they fortify that. They don't actually use. Is that fortified? So I don't yeah, think 120 I think minutes. That's... Dogfish Head. Dogfish Head does out. not. I think anything over maybe 20 is, is either been fortified or distilled. All right. Well, the mm. 20s are uh, Samuel Adams Millennium is 20%. Yeah, there's a bu- there's a bunch up there, but it, but the the question is for via fermentation alone, which is this throwing throwing the monkey in the wrench as it were. Well, I think we need to do a little research Maybe we can on Google that. that. Maybe we can uh, Google I that. actually now have the answer to that as well. Ha ha. Okay. The five strongest naturally fermented beers in the world. I give oh, well, here you go. Number five is 44 Magnum. 
brewed by Lagerhaus Brewery and Grill out of Florida, United States, a barley wine, and it is 22% alcohol. 22%. Italian. Nice. Then we have next from the Herkimer Pub and Brewery out of Minnesota, the Torapuru Triple Bock, which is 23%. It's brewed with Japanese sake yeast. Then... McKellar out of Denmark has an imperial stout known as Black Fist. 26.1%. Oh, it's aged 10 times in a variety of bourbon barrels. Whew. Number wow. two on the list out of Scotland. Gotta love those Scots. Brewdog Brewery. Ghost Deer. Mm. Belgian strong pale ale and it clocks in at 28%. A, a pale a ale? TV. Damn. Wow. A pale ale? This we got to get some of that on the show. Try this one. Oh, During man. the fermentation process, the brewers use a variety of yeast strains and drip-fed exotic sugars into the brew to make sure the yeast continues to grow. It's wow. aged for six months in whiskey, rum, bourbon, and sherry barrels. I have a reason to go to Scotland now. And it's exclusively it's served. Dog. We can get it here. It's no, no, you, I don't here. think you can because it says it is exclusively served from quote a single handcrafted and authentic deer's head unquote. Oh my god! All right, we've uh, got to go to the brew target. And brewery. number one, <laughs> it's not a coincidence. Number one is Sam Adams, American Strong Ale, their Utopias beer, which we've talked about on the show before. Yeah, yeah. It, 29% ABV. Wow. Uh, they use a champagne yeast that survives the higher alcohol content, and they also add in maple syrup to raise the alcohol content with extra fermentable sugars. 29%. Nice. Okay. So... Now a visit to the Sam Adams Brewery is on my bucket list. There you go. Dog. But well, Utopia, Utopia is, I think, we, is, is very available year round. Yeah, I mean, or not year round, but around uh, New Year's every year, uh, they yeah, put a different version of it out. But it's ridiculously expensive. It's like a thousand dollars a bottle or something like that. Uh, it's a couple hundred, I think. Yeah, it's, I, and then and then as you start aging it, then they resell them on eBay. Like the five-year-old ones get near five hundred bucks or so. Yeah. yeah. We have a bottle of that that's actually several years old that somebody gave us. Um, Utopias, really? Utopias, yeah, and it's not. It's been opened, but I don't think it goes bad. Oh, uh, I have a little more and trivia. That percentage. So, uh, Gary, uh, when uh, yeah, 20, I'm there. When in 2012. Utopia was first released at 29%, 58 proof, although some of its barrels clocked in at 33%. Yes, wow. you read that right. Brewmasters at Sam Anno's actually blended these barrel, barrels down for the sake of taste. Wow. <laughs> okay, this one is... Uh, so I actually, I think I have seen this before. It's in a bottle that looks like, it's like a, a brass copper. bottle, yeah. Yeah, the, yep. but it looks like one of the giant copper uh, beer fermentation tanks mm -hmm. that you can see. Like, yes. you know, that's I. So I think I may have seen this before, but I've yeah. never had it before. We actually mentioned it on the show. I think I think we did a we did a topic. It was either in the very early going of Pine No Return or the latter stages of Happy Time Magic Hour. We talked about the world's most expensive beers. Yeah, and I think this was one of like either the top one or number two. Utopia's is up there as the world's most expensive beers every year. Yeah. All right, you know what? I am going to add that to my Christmas wish list this year. And How just about see that? Hey. If my uh, wife comes through. Feedback what leading to some topics. So yeah, special. that was awesome. I don't know who it was. I'd love to thank him in person, but anonymous. Thank you to anonymous on pnrshow.com/ask. Um, I've answered that based on our, our research here on the show, um, and it's now a post on pnrshow.com. Sweet. Was that the only one? Look again. That was, yeah, that was the only one. Um, let oh, me check. I can go back. I can go back and check. We might have had one, like, while we were talking because it was so popular. Yeah, I mean, it was a thing now, right? Um, no, that was Anonymous had asked to the PNR show. Oh, look at this. 
<laughs> You're so funny. Rob. Rob is completely amazing. Can we hear more from him, please? Well, the answer for <laughs> games, Star Wars, and Battlestar Galactica. Oh, we can we can answer that easily. The answer is no. So, no. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this one <laughs> uh, from the site. It's not going to be a post. Goodbye. Well, th- uh, so that was uh, anonymous. Another <laughs> part, wait, another person put in what the holy fuck as well. So. <laughs> I don't know if that also came through or not. Uh, uh, we're gonna delete that one. Put the adult stamp on the show, that's <laughs> Yeah, there, there we go. So all yeah. right. Even Thank though you. I'm deleting your post, it did make it on the show. So you're, hey, you're congratulations! Keep those posts coming. Yeah. That's awesome. We have to make sure we check that every uh, every show. Well, who knows what's gonna be there? Yeah. Uh, so, like I started to say, uh, if you're like us, you have still have some gifts to buy this holiday season, and. Uh, at the top of anybody's list should be some, some beer-related things, and and Jeremy has has tracked down some holiday gifts for the craft beer lover, and he's going to share some with us right now to see what we think is worth our well hard-earned dollars. Or or Keith, or Keith, or, Keith. Keith. or Keith's going to do it. Oh sure, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, before, before before I jump into this, I should mention that if you stop by uh, the PNR Show website, there's an Amazon link there. And if you click that to go to Amazon, you will be uh, giving a few bucks of your holiday spending towards a very worthy cause, and that is us. And we need money to buy beer and to keep domains alive, such as <laughs> pnrshow.com. So anything you can do that way, uh, we, we much appreciate. Screw that smile thing where they could let you give some of your money to charity we're your charity of choice, pnrshow.com. Hey, hey. So there we go. So I have a list here from Fortune Magazine of the top holiday gifts for the craft beer lover. Yeah. We've got, first up on the list, is the Yeti Rambler Coaster. Um, they actually call I'm, it a Colster. A colster. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this and paste it into chat so you guys can see it. Uh, be all, by all means, please go and check that out. Uh, it is it is basically a stainless steel koozie, mm-hmm. um, which will keep your beer bottle cold way longer than the standard foam koozie. Uh, and they call it a colster. I don't know why. I kind of hate that name. Are you guys? With Yetis in in your neck of the woods? Yeah, we have them. They're okay. um, them in Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Keith, not so much. Yeah, I, we don't get many Yetis out here. Okay, so yeah, the Yeti. I actually yeah. was talking about the cooler company. Oh, you didn't mean the big hairy guy? No. No. Yeah, you know, we have Sierra Nevadas in the redwoods, so we get Yetis and Bigfoots. <laughs> I think so we were anyway, both about the hairy apparently thing. they don't know about Yeti. Uh, Yeti is a um, a very well produced uh, cooler, very popular down here in Texas, as you might imagine. That um, I know a couple friends of mine that have them, and we went we went camping in hundred degree heat, uh, and they stocked it with ice at the beginning of the weekend with beers and stuff. And sitting out in the middle of uh, of the grass in the sun, I will tell you that there was still ice in that cooler on Sundays. They're incredibly well insulated, uh, but you pay for that insulation. I think a regular cooler is like three hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, so, a regular koozie goes for ninety nine cents, or they give them away free with logos on them. Exactly. Um, and this one is going to cost you thirty bucks. Yeah. So that that was where I was going with this. They're they're uh, they're well known for keeping things cool, but you're you're going to pay the price for. It. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I I vote a thumbs down on that one. Yeah. We I, I, we've we've I looked at like getting that. a. We've looked at getting a Yeti several times, and then we just said, you know what? Someone else always brings a Yeti, and we don't camp that much or not out in the sun that much to justify spending that much. So, okay, at $300 for a cooler and about $2 for a bag of ice, that's exactly. a lot of bags of ice. Exactly. That's, yeah. why we always, that's why we always back out of that deal. So just to give you guys some idea, the the Yeti Sidekick, which is a small cool, the smallest mm-hmm. one I think I can find on their site, yep. it is nine inches by one and a half inches by five and a half inches for a six pack. Yeah, one and a half by five and a half. So it's very that's very small. Yep. Um, I don't even know if it holds. I guess it maybe holds a six pack. Yeah. 
and now I, it probably doesn't even hold a six pack. That's thirty five dollars, and they're showing it as like a wallet. They don't even like have material like like drinks and stuff in it. So it's like um, it's, you know that's tiny. Yeah, pricey. I, I vote thumbs down just because of price, like Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, it, is, if someone wanted to give it to me, I would sure as heck use the. They, heck out they of are it. awesome. I'll tell you, um, they are. Um, awesome. But yeah, I ain't, I ain't yeah. buying this for no one, let alone myself. Yeah. Um, a thirty dollar koozie can just uh, suck it. I don't care if it's what, what sort of what sort of space age materials it's made from. Just go, just go take it out of the snow for a minute. But... <laughs> All right, what's next on our list? Next wow. up is something right up Gary's alley. This one's by Drink Tanks. This is the 128 ounce insulated growler. It goes for 109 to 114 dollars, depending on the color finish you put on it. Oh, there's like uh, 20 different colors. Yeah, you you can you, this you can do it. Uh, did I paste it? I didn't paste it. Did I? No. Yeah. Yeah. Control. So if you just look here to the go to the article, the links are right there inside the article. We don't have. You didn't give us the article. No, I didn't give you the article. Yes, that was the uh, Yeti coolers one. You pasted it again, Keith. Thank you. Yeah. No, no. The 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 article that you're talking or picking from from Fortune is on your. Is oh, on you the, grabbed it. Oh, you grabbed. Yeah, it's thing. there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the I don't have that. I, I mean, it's in the show notes. No, it's, it's not. Okay. Yes, it Gary, is. Gary, look at the show notes. Damn it. <laughs> Damn, okay, I'll keep right again. Okay. We, anyway, we didn't want to. I didn't want to spoil it for anyone, so I didn't post th it. Thumbs okay. up. I'm totally thumbs up on uh, drink tanks. I have one of their regular 64 inch growlers, and it's awesome. It's very cool looking. Uh, I love it. it. I fill it up with anything that will fill it in California, and take it camping every summer in Oregon. It does a great job of keeping the beer cool. It's uh, huge. It's 120. That's, that's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah, and they have a little diagram there. there. It, that's eight pints. That's eight pints of beer. Yeah, hold for, for 24 hours. That's plenty of time to the, drink it. The yeah. nice, the nice thing about drink tanks too is they make that keg top, which yeah. means you'll keep it carbonated the whole time too. Uh, I, I yeah. use that keg top, and I keep, uh, I, I can keep a growler fresh for like a week just using that keg top. A wow, sixty-four cool. inch growler. A six hundred nine bucks though. No. No. That's However, this does not include the keg top. If it included the keg top, it would be a slam dunk. Without the keg top, a uh, 128-ounce growler for 100 bucks uh, it's a little pricey but, still. But rating this as a gift? Yeah. Again, I would oh, use yeah. the heck out of it if it was given to me. So they, they launched this on a Kickstarter, and I think it was cheaper on the Kickstarter when they launched it, and now that this is the commercial price. So, uh, I, but yeah, I... They're hard to fill in California, so I wouldn't buy one for myself. But um, if I lived in Oregon, where you can just fill them with whatever you want, I would definitely buy one of these for myself. I would pay that thing back many times over within the first year. Does anybody it's, up there fill? Twenty-four hours? hours of cold. So I would, I, but I was, I would do the hundred and like whatever sixty bucks and do the um, the keg top with it. Yeah, you want the keg top. Yeah, it would, it would pay for itself. Jeremy, what were you asking? I, I was wondering if there's anybody up there that actually fills growlers these days. In in Oregon? No, no around, in around Oregon. Us. I mean, you he does a bunch of pass a barber shop without getting a growler fill in Oregon. <laughs> so, and um, I know Drake's over in San Leandro will fill my um, drink takes regular 64 inch growler. I bring it every time I fly in and out of Oakland. I throw my growler in the car, and then on my way back, I fill it up at yeah. Drake's because it's right by the airport. Wow. Okay, so home brewing just got pimped out because the next item, my God, I want this. I just need. To oh yeah. With, I just need to come up with two thousand dollars. Yeah, I've been uh, <laughs> I've been drooling over this for about a year now since it went up on uh, on various Kickstarter sites or or it might have been on Indiegogo. But the, the Zymatic Pico Brew is just it takes home brewing to a tabletop. And just makes it dead simple to experiment with recipes and stuff. In fact, I know a number of actual brewers, uh, craft brewers, that are using these to test out recipes. They'll make the mini version in this, and then if they like it, they will they will make them you know the the bigger test batches in the, in the real equipment. That's an interesting. So what it is is a, it's a home brewing kit that you basically just put the grains and the hop system in it. You input your own recipe, or you grab 
I guess they have 300 plus different recipes mm -hmm. available from the owners of the system, and you press start. Um, it does. Can walk away. 90% of the work. You just need. It says you need to do some intervention during the cooling phase, um, and then you clean up. You stick the containers in the dish in the dishwasher, and two and a half gallons of beer later, and you're you basically did nothing. Yeah, I, I think you you have to you have to open some valves, um, and then you get to dump it into a tank, and then put that that little keg in your in your yeah. fridge for a couple weeks, um, and it go. Just <laughs> if you're a no, no look, if you're a serious home brewer, if you're a serious craft brew guy out of your home, this thing might actually save you money in the long run. Boy, that's a long run. That's what I said. It's a long run. But that's a long, long run. Right? That's a long run. How about that's just, that's just, from, just from, from screwed up recipes alone? Yeah. Where you're out like $60, $70, $80 in ingredients for a messed up recipe. Um, you know, not, not to mention the time element of sitting there and making sure everything goes exactly right before you're done. I mean, it's two grand, but. You go in with you go in on this with like six or seven or eight of your friends that love to drink home brews and you know 100 200 the bucks. Pro the bucks problem is you get eight of your friends you only uh, out of two and a half gallons you only get a glass each by the time it's Yeah, you done, don't get so. much. But so, so as a, it really as doesn't a work that way. As a gift? Yes. Oh, heck yeah. Two I mean, I I mean, you know, granted, this thing is not as small as they make it appear. This thing takes up a serious footprint on your counter. But I would make it's like a kegerator size for this thing. I would, yeah, I would, I would kick my toaster, my blender, and probably yeah. half of my stove off. I, I would remove my coffee maker for that. Oh yeah. So on our list next, Keith, uh, we've actually mentioned these guys on our show before, and uh, we have the opportunity of maybe getting the, some the Spiegelau. Yes, we have. I don't know. Yes. If we've, uh, I don't remember. Spiegelau craft. Yeah, but, I have. I think oh, Gary this, mentioned it. Oh, these the ones show. Gary has? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna yeah, say, this is, this these is look favorite. like the ones you were saying. Yeah, and these are amazing. I used one of those glasses. tonight for yeah. drinking that porter. Yep. Craft and, beer you know glass what? says, tasting approved. IPA, yeah. American wheat and wit beer, stout, and, and a barrel-aged beer glass. Um, and, yeah, heck yeah. The, yeah I, the glass prices are not ridiculous. The They really... Having the right glass just improves the beer flavor so much; it really does. Nobody believes that until unless you're a wine drinker, because then you know that the right wine glass makes all the difference in I wine. I don't believe it, but I mean, I, I trust you. It, I, it's it makes such a difference. It, drinking a beer out of a bottle versus putting it in a tulip glass alone uh, just makes it taste like it's coming off of a draft at, at your favorite pub. Um, and and having the right shape glass to just takes another notch above that. And those are right now going for forty dollars for a set of four, which is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's really not. All right. The, um, if, you got a craft, if you got a craft beer guy in your life, this is the great gift yeah. to give him. At, really at forty bucks, that is that is worth it. The um, I will say that there is a distinct difference in IPAs when I drink out of that IPA glass versus when I don't. Because I've, I've had a lot of IPAs, and sometimes I'll just grab a glass and have one. And if I have that same beer out of the IPA glass in that set, it is definitely a, a, a better flavor of the beer. It, I don't know how they figured it out. They're geniuses. They deserve some kind of Nobel Prize. But it is worth it for the IPA glass alone. I would agree right, with that. What Sam Adams it? came up with a, their, their own glass for their beer, and it actually makes a difference. I've had it a few times at different restaurants that have it. The Sam Adams glass works, so it just. Oh like, yeah, that's the uh, developed by MIT. Yeah. In conjunction with MIT, yeah, those are cool glasses. They are, and and it actually makes their lager taste better, which is 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 a feat in and of itself. <laughs> uh, okay, what's next? Uh, next up is the Randall Jr. It's a. Well, I'm going to read the description because I really don't know how to describe this thing. It's It says, and it's actually on the Dogfish Head website, our mini enamel animal will give your beer the power for off-centered infusions. Just twist the top, add hops, spices, fruit, or whatnot 
Fill with your favorite off-centered ale, which they want dogfish head to be, and savor the fruits of your creativity. Basically, it's a way of adding more flavor to your beer. Uh, the new super thick Randall holds a whopping 16 ounces made of double walled BPA plastic. He's a bold but sensitive guy, so please wash him with mild non-sensitive soap. And by golly, keep him out of the microwave or dishwasher. But basically, they're they're showing yeah for 20 bucks you get a, a plastic tumbler with a little built-in kind of measuring thingy yeah. on top that you yeah, can yeah, fill yeah, yeah. with stuff, and then. When you pour your beer out of this into your regular glass, it basically infuses the beer with whatever you have on top. If you've done any, uh, if you've mm. done any uh, like of your own herbal teas with fruit infused or or, or cinnamon infused, this is very much in the same vein as that. Yeah, that's a no. And, and if you want to do this silliness, yeah. you can put the beer in a glass, put the ingredients in the beer, and pour it through a strainer. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm not buying this for twenty bucks. Uh, I don't know if they'd even want it as a gift. It would. It would be on a shelf and never used. This would be the yeah. gift that you get from someone who says, "Oh, you know why Keith drinks beer? This probably he'd like this." Yeah. This. This is the thing. That, yeah. Exactly like Jeremy said. This is the thing. Oh, thanks. That's all stuff. Yeah. You're, uh, and you're you walking. You're try walking it once. through. You're walking through Bed Bath and Beyond, and it's like, "Oh, I gotta yeah. get something for Keith. Oh, what am I gonna right. get him? Oh, look at that beer infused." Crap. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, this one should stay home. Uh, stay yeah. on the store shelf. Don't 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 give this to a beer guy. Uh, save your money and get him the Pico beer brewing system instead. He'd much more but appreciate if, that. If, if that one should stay home, Keith, what about the physics beer system? Ah, available only at Brookstone, which is so that's a, right that's, a, <laughs> that's a that's a right, right there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the off-brand gadget thing. Fresh draft taste from any bottle or store-bought beer fits most cans and bottles, even 64-inch growlers. No separate CO2 or nitro canisters necessary, but powered by four AA batteries not included. I think what this does is it basically takes the beer out of your bottle, growler, or can and tries to pour it through a system that's going to make it taste like draft. Uh, oh. I ain't buying it. I don't know. Listen, is it, is it basically a straw that blows air into your? Yeah, brain? I think so, but it's it doesn't require CO two. I'm so watching the video. It, I'm watching the video as you talk. Okay, is it like it's like pumping? You open the up the out. top. You stick the beer bottle in there. You put this rubber tubing. It pressurizes the canister inside. It pushes the beer down into the bottle and up through the tube. Which opens yeah. up the beer and it controls the fluid rate that it's dispensing out, and it makes it's it taste much more like draft. Yeah, it's trying to make your beer taste like draft beer by by pushing more air into it. So, I, do you think it, it 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 pushes more air into it, or do you think it basically decarbonates your beer and gives you a nice head on the top of it and creamy yeah, beer? As as it does. Uh, I'd, I'd say thumbs down on this. Yeah. So it's, not so much, it's not so much putting air into the beer as it's putting pressure on the beer. Yeah. Um, I, yeah that, that goes What's the, the price on this thing? Did anybody see it? 170 170 bucks for this? No, it kind of looks no. like it almost looks like a Keurig for beer. Yeah. Buy the drink, buy the drink tank. Yeah, no, you yep. Yeah, for 170 bucks, go get the drink drink tank with the big growler. Um, or even much, even better much better investment. The drink or tank. Or even better uh, tank top. Get into your car and drive Don't, to a nice yeah. little pub and <laughs> have a draft beer. Spend eight dollars on a draft beer, for God's sakes. Enjoy yourself. Go go for a trivia night. Yeah. Um, you know what? We should probably push on to our picks so we can close out this show. Uh, okay. We can come back to this and finish up next week, though, if we'd like. Sure. Put it on the on the thing. Yeah. The, all right. Crap. Yeah, we got one, two, three, four. We got three more to go, and then you had some trivia to do too. So yeah, we'll no, push sorry. those to we'll, next week. We'll we'll push that to next week. Let's yeah, let's push that. And let's do uh, let's do picks. Oh, you want to push through these? Yeah, just, just finish your okay. list. All yeah, right, we're we're we can do picks. We can do quick picks. All right, uh, the craft beer and pretzel popper kits. Um, bringing it up. No, right no, I don't. I I, I do like my pretzels. It's only eight bucks. Yeah, it's it's eight bucks and it's a it's something you, you say it's only eight bucks to this, but, but to the twenty dollar 
beer infuser, you say no. Well, the $20 no. beer infuser is just a plastic cup. I don't, well, don't want to mess with my beer. This but is this a is, craft this is, beer pretzel mix. Well, but yeah, the, it, it's letting you make pretzels with craft beer, and then yeah. they give you like a little rosemary sea salt thing. Yeah. Um, and this is, a food is always a great gift because you don't have to store it. You, you make it, you enjoy it, it's done. Yeah, I'd totally, if someone gave me this, I'd make it, I'd enjoy it, and it would be done. You probably yeah, um, could put some of your shitty beers that you don't like into it, and it tastes great. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. Sam Adams Lager from that holiday pack would be perfect. Oh, I like Sam Adams yeah. Lager. You send those to me. I like uh, Sam Adams Next up. Lager. Yeah. Awesome. No, I agree. That's uh, For eight bucks, definitely grab that. Grab two. What the hell? Yeah. That's a good Good one. stocking or, stuffer. That's a stocking stuffer. Yeah. Um, now, look, when next, you drink beer, you should always, of course, drink responsibly. Not like we us. Always, we always enjoy our beer responsibly well, from the comfort know, we, of our homes. Yeah, we are very responsible because the four of us are in our own homes when we do this show. Exactly. That's true. We That's don't true. have to go out and drive after this, or at That's least true. I hope we don't. That's true. Um, but, but in case you do go out do, and drink, yeah. The wife does want you to go to the store after you stopped by and, and did a PNR show with us. Um, there is the uh, back tr Backtrack Mobile Pro, which is a... Holy cow! I like the uh, the Apple Watch version of it. Um, <laughs> the there it is a little breathalyzer that you can take with you in your pocket, and you will know if it's safe for you to drink or and drink and drive or not to drink and then well, drive. I, I, I don't think this is more of a party game. <laughs> no, I you <laughs> know the most drunk. I think this, this is pretty yeah. freaking cool because as I'm reading here. Um, it, you put your profile in, your information and stuff. It not only tracks what your blood alcohol content is, uh, but it's got this little little part of it's called zero line. It tells you when your blood alcohol content will likely return back to zero. So you can you can actually it gives you a times like don't go out driving now, but in about ninety minutes you'll be fine. As long as you don't drink more. Yeah, True. as long as you can stop drinking. You know, the problem this... is if you've got to stay at the party for an extra 90 minutes. Yeah, that's gonna suck. you can hide in the bathroom. Uh, but there is yeah. a scary part to this. It features Bluetooth connectivity. Great. Innovative tracking, personalization, and Apple Health integration tools, which in my mind says if you need this to the extent where you're going to do innovative tracking and personalization, you might have a drinking problem. You might. <laughs> well, I, like, I like Jeremy's hey, idea. Hey, 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 hey. Careful, careful, Rob. We call them fans. Yeah. <laughs> well, drinking one man's drinking problem is another man's podcast. I, I like I like the idea of, of passing this around at a party to see who's the most drunk. Yeah. And uh, giving them another beer as a prize. <laughs> now, when, now, when you buy this, you can buy uh, it with uh, no additional mouthpieces, a ten pack, a twenty pack, or a fifty pack of mouthpieces. Just for you and all of your friends. I, I love that it's on sale too right now for yeah. regular price one forty nine ninety nine. Now it's ninety nine ninety nine for the it's holiday. Very, it's very highly reviewed though. Ninety six percent of the reviewers recommend this product. All those drunks just say <laughs> hell yeah. You know, Keith, as you um are starting to have a teenager, this might be a useful thing to have around. Oh, so when she no. comes home, <laughs> you know, I I am more likely to get the uh the one that hooks up to your car. Will it will not start? Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a good idea. So, all right, we have one more. Last one on the and last one on the list uh is State Brewery Guides. Yeah, yeah, this is actually an Amazon link, uh, which is uh, Forbes is a cheap uh way to get. A uh, uh, some some money back from their view, from their readers by clicking their Amazon link. Um, so we'll repost this link in our on our site with our information <laughs> shortly. Uh, but this is interesting. This is an Amazon link to every state that has a significant amount of craft beer in it, and it gives you a a guide to all the breweries and the, all the beers and the styles and stuff in that in that type and they run for about 15 to 19 bucks each so you could grab one for your own state or one you're going to go visit this year um, I think it's I a would, great idea I would give this a thumbs down though because there are apps yeah. that do this I would do there this are, yeah, you know, the there are apps that do this but not everybody's an app person you know if my if my father was a craft beer lover I, I'd, I'd hand him this book before I told him to get an app the problem is the and moment that it's published, it's almost half of it's probably obsolete. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, maybe, but yeah. 
but you know, I I still say not everyone is is as technically advanced as us. So I'd rather have having fun. an option for the beer lovers that aren't technically advanced, I think you know, for fifteen bucks, what the hell, you're not going to go wrong. And yeah. you know, it could be this could be something just fun to page through. Yeah, this is great bathroom reading material, or sure, something to you, thumb through on a plane during takeoff you know and landing. Your your in law, your your kids, families are going to do a road trip next year. Buy them a Florida breweries book. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Buy books. I think you there are worse things on this list. Yeah, there are worse things. There are worse things on those lists, but there's nothing better than our picks for this week, and they're coming at you right now. Half pint time. Jeremy's up first with his iOS app. If you like calendars, Jeremy's got the app for you. My pick is Calendarium. It's an iOS app that tells you all kinds of interesting things that happen throughout history on this oh, day. That's cool. So I like it already. Fun, and it does sun, sunrise, sunset crap too. But really, what's interesting is just you know spend five minutes reading through oh, what awesome. happened today. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'd recommend it. Calendarium. It's it shows you where the where the planets are positioned in the solar system. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's it's oh, a fun app. Yeah. Huh? That's cool. Is that a freebie or is it a paid? Nine nine cents. That's not bad. It That's was it was free when I got it, and I think I tweeted that link uh, back when it was free. But it's it's worth a buck. Uh, just quickly, on this day in history, sunrise, sunset time, planets view, weeks, days of numbers passed between January 1st left till 31st, 31st December, the moon phase, the day length, geographic coordinates. No internet connection required. Yeah, Pretty cool. It's, it's, it's worth a buck. For 99 cents, that's great. Cool. All right. Then next up on our list, Mr. Gary... Um, I have a, an iOS game. It's also a dollar. It's called Rope, and it gives you these uh, series of puzzles. They're all probably hard to see. That are just in this uh, the same kind of um, grid that's um, an octagon or stop sign, whatever the shape is. And you have to recreate the puzzle they give you at the top using the stuff at the bottom. Um, so it's sort of this uh, you know uh, brain teaser puzzle game that you can uh, play uh, every now and then, and it's uh, entertaining, and they get really harder. The first ones are very simple, and they get to some stuff that you're like, how the hell does that even work? Um, so, yeah, I've been playing it for a few weeks now, just kind of doing, like, one puzzle at a time here and there, and it's a good kind of, you know, if you've got a couple minutes to burn on something and you don't uh, want to have a huge, uh, long Hearthstone war or something, it's a good game for that. Awesome. Keith, what is your pick for the week? My pick is kind of a bizarre one this week. Um, it's also no. an iOS app. Yeah, it is weird. Um, it's called Powerline Detector. And if you're doing any home improvement, um, this is I've actually used this app recently, and I've had it, I think I got it free a while back. It's actually $2 now. Dollar ninety nine the app store. I think I got it free on one of those lists of free apps days like years ago, and I t kind of tucked it away and forgot about it. But uh, this is one of those things where I, I just kind of pulled it out recently, and it, I was able to once I calibrated it, it actually worked pretty good. And what it does is it uses your phone as a sensor to find uh, the electrical lines in the wall. Um, so hmm. I'll come, kind of show my phone here. It's basically showing there's no power right behind me because it's just my hand. But as I move this along a wall, if there's an electric line, it'll the meter will jump, um, and you'll be able to f find out where current is. Um, it does not have a lot of great reviews on the website, but I think that's because nobody's taken the time to calibrate it. They just expect it to work out of the box, and you really do need to calibrate it. But once you calibrate it for the room you're in, um, it seems to work pretty good. It at least gets you close to where there's a power line so that you'd know not to drop a nail right there to hang that picture. Um, kind of a useful thing. Uh, for me, it's just kind of a fun thing. Uh, but uh, it's two bucks on the App Store, and if you're you know, if you're into that kind of thing or you're just doing some home improvement, it's a good one to have in your pocket. Fun with electricity. Yeah. 
and doing things that you never thought your phone was able to do, and sure shit right. it can. Yeah. All right, my pick nope. for the week as we close this up is a podcast that I've been enjoying for about a month or so, and it's called Good Job Brain. Um, I thought it was Good Job Brian. No, Good Job Brain. Um, it's a group of uh, four individuals who bonded together uh, over pub trivia nights. Um, some of them were co-workers and, or friends from other from their avenues, and they started to get together, going to pub trivia, and they really enjoyed it so much so that they created a, a podcast about pub trivia. Now, on the surface, that sounds kind of boring, but they do it in a really entertaining style where they they give quizzes to each other, um, asking questions, but they also you know give you some some bits of trivia where things come from. They don't just do the generic you know presidents and history. You know, they talk about the history of toilets or how bras came to be or why is there indoor plumbing but not uh, but not a, an oven in every house in the Middle Ages or whatever. You know, they, they, they go into some really obscure things and not always PG rated stuff. It's very entertaining. It's very interesting. Um, it's great podcast listening for when you're going uh, driving home and maybe you're a little bit tired you know, early in the morning and you're going to work or late at night if you're trying to go home, keep yourself awake and then try to answer the questions along with them and, and they're they're really funny besides. So good job brain podcast. You can find them anywhere uh, where you can get podcasts or their website is goodjobbrain.com. And as everyone knows, podcasts with four hosts really the ideal for Yeah. Them. Absolutely. It really is, yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. So uh Next week, we are going to continue our Sam Adams holiday beers with, we got the Chocolate Bock, and what was that second one? The Winter Lager. The Winter Lager. Two beers, again, kind of coming from different directions. Let's see if they can meet up as well as they did this week. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, on the 18th of December, Star Wars The Force Awakens. That was the only Star Wars news of the night. We're almost a week away from heaven on earth. Gentlemen, any closing thoughts? Drink more beer. Drink no, we're going to play the theme because we're way over time, and I think Alpha Geek wants us off. So we're gonna Yeah, run. bye, Alpha Geek. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, okay, there's the music. I really want to drink another holiday porter, but... Mm -hmm. <sighs> Alright, we're clear from Alpha Geek. I stopped the show. Good night, YouTubes. Stop the broadcast. There we go.